Well, it's the day after the large anti-Trump demonstration in Toronto, and some of the people that wanted to go down there, such as my guest Eric Brazeau, wanted to be pro-Trump and anti-Islamist, but that wasn't going to happen. At least that's what Eric Brazeau found out. Let's run some footage of what Eric encountered. Start instigating that crowd, you'll be arrested. Okay, but I can walk down. If the you street. begin demonstrating, we are going to give you a safe place to demonstrate. Okay. So if those banners come out of your okay. bag, right. we're going to give you a safe place. Okay, but and it's not going to be down there. So Eric, it looks like the police were indicating to you that only anti-Trump protesters were going to be able to go down in front of the American consulate to protest. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. They came into Tim Hortons and told me and a few other people that were with me, uh, that I was with, that you guys are not getting south of Dundas. And I said, excuse me? He goes, that's correct. You're not going south of Dundas. I said, but everybody's walking. He says, yes, but you are not. And I said, well, why not? He goes, well, because we know your views and uh, we're not going to allow you to create a disturbance by people seeing your signs. They know who I am, uh, they know my views, and they know it's easier to perhaps shut me down because I will feel less of a citizen or a little weakened because I have these hate crimes charges. In essence, uh, very simply, they were trying to intimidate me. They would have tried to intimidate anyone who was uh, in that situation, but they just used that against me. Of course, I didn't accept it because I know, even though I have been convicted, I'm still an innocent, a citizen living in Canada with the rights guaranteed under the Charter. Mm. Indeed, and Eric decided to defy the police ban on displaying one of his signs. Let's see what happened next. What? So Eric, we witnessed you getting handcuffed, taken away, then what happened? Okay, let me, well I basically sat for two hours in a box with my arms behind my back. Uh, that was quite painful and, and, and very uncomfortable, I can say. Um, I was brought down to Station 51. They put me in an interview room, kept me there. I, I must say, it was slight, I was under a little stress, <laughs> given the fact that I have a, a court appearance on February the 17th. And right now, uh, do I, you know, I'm not on bail. So they were kind of uh, saying, they were pulling in my chain, and I was remaining calm, of course, knowing that I was in the right. They came back after about uh, two hours and said, uh, you're being released without charge. They tried to tell me that they are allowed under some, I don't know, they're just allowed to arrest people to create, to, uh, uh, def to what am I working on looking for? They're trying to keep the peace. So if the mob wants to assault me, they will arrest me in order to keep the peace. When you live in a society with police who are supposed to serve and protect, why don't they just serve and protect and, and protect my rights to walk down University, University Street and make a simple statement? I'm one person. I was never going to be violent. The only violence would have been them against me. So why aren't the police and the s state saying, yes, citizens who want to make a statement regardless of what the mob thinks and what the mob wants to say, we will protect that right in Canada and in the Western world. And, and certainly we've seen other incidents of this, say on campus, you have a contentious speaker come in, uh, the mob acts up, the, sir, the, you know, the conference is, is canceled. What does this say in the bigger picture about the future of freedom of speech in Canada? Uh, uh, I, oh, freedom of speech. Uh, yeah, you're free to speak as long as those who are the mob agree with what you are speaking. It's, it's, it's about as simple as that. And every time they do cancel a speech or they arrest me, what we are doing is we are acquiescing to the mob. And once you fear the mob, the mob has control. Before the parliament right now, we have Bill M103, where it will basically be an anti-blasphemy law, where it will be uh, criminal to offer criticism of Islam. Um, is this something that concerns you, given that that law is not even in effect? And look what's happening to people like you who are speaking out. Well, I'll go further. And under Article 319 of uh, the court provisions as they stand today, there is no defense for incitement of hate. On November the 13th, I went down to Dundas Square because I was very angry with what just happened in Paris. And I said very clearly that Muslims shot 500 people. The Crown is alleging that my statement that Muslims shot 500 people is a hate crime. So already, 
um, we are not allowed to hate a group or an ideology that states that it wants us dead, that it wants to wipe out our civilization. Now, is that the people? Who knows? But I know that that's definitely the ideology as written in the text itself. So with this Islamophobia law that's going to be coming out is just another application of that idea, but even further so. So now any discussion of Islam will be deemed Islamophobia in any, any way. So this needs to be dealt with politically. This needs to be dealt with through debate. This needs to be dealt with shutting down stupid ideas with better ideas, shutting down idiocy with logic and common sense and things that, and what reasonable thinking, reasonableness. We must have, so at this point, when someone says, for example, Mr. Brazo, you're an Islamophobe, well, was, my response to that is, well, is it irrational to fear Islam? So we must stay rational. We reached out to police to get their side of the Eric Brazau incident. A spokesman said the arresting officers were not available for comment, but he added that sometimes it is necessary for police to protect people from themselves. However, as Parliament seems determined to pass Bill M103, which would essentially make criticism of Islam illegal, some might argue that this law against the religion of peace already exists, well, at least unofficially. For the Rebel.media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Like what you just saw? Then click subscribe below and never miss another Rebel video.